Othello. Convinced of Desdemona's unfaithfulness, her fiancé Othello seeks to kill her. Although she was innocent, he murders her before he understands the truth. Here, John finds himself in a similar position to Othello. Although Lenina does not try to deceive him, John finds Lenina, whom he loves, to be unfaithful. While Lenina is not considered unfaithful by the standards of society, John yells the same words as Othello, impudent strumpet, at his love and attacks her. During the last day of his life, John is once again confronted by Lenina's presence and attacks himself, imagining he is striking her. The next day, the horror of the night before drives him to suicide, just as Othello takes his own life. Go. The Tempest. A sorcerer, Prospero, the Duke of Milan, and his daughter Miranda have been banished for 12 years on an island. A deformed, simple native of the island, often regarded as subhuman, Caliban falls in love with Miranda and enters into slavery for Prospero to be closer to Miranda. When Prospero's brothers are shipwrecked on an island by a storm of Prospero's doing, Miranda and Caliban become excited by the new people on the island, since they have both lived their lives there. Miranda falls from the moon, as he believes them to be, to seek revenge against Prospero. John embodies the spirits of both Miranda and Caliban, who have been raised away from civilization. Bernard and Lenina, the strangers who visit the reservation in Brave New World, find John to be both physically beautiful person, the newcomers in the Tempest view Miranda as, and the misshapen, simple creature they view Caliban to be, someone who is subhuman and cannot understand modern society. John looks to modern society to escape his isolated home like Miranda and Caliban do. Like Miranda, he falls in love with one of the newcomers. John falls in love with Lenina as Miranda does with Ferdinand. Miranda and Ferdinand agree not to consummate a marriage until a ceremony has been performed. These are the same ideals of love that John has, which differs from society. Caliban, on the other hand, uses force and attempts rape, which is a crime, just like marriage is viewed as a crime to society. John holds resentment towards Linda, his mother, as Caliban resents Prospero. He seeks the newcomers to help him gain revenge against Prospero, as John uses the modern world to escape the reservation where he is also considered subhuman. King Lear. In Shakespeare's King Lear, the character Edmund betrays his brother and father for his own gain. He flirts with Lear's married daughters, Regan and Goneril, in attempting to play them against each other, and near the end of the play, he orders for the executions of Lear and his daughter Cordelia. In the play, Edmund embodies the willingness to break law and order for his own personal gains. Eventually, Edmund's exiled brother, Edgar, returns disguised and mortally wounds Edmund. With Edgar then revealing his true self, Edmund contemplates upon how he has been the architect of his own demise. In aspirations towards redeeming himself, Edmund orders to stop Lear and Cordelia's death, but in the end, it is too late for Cordelia. When debating with world controller Mustafa Mon, John describes the exchange between Edgar and Edmund, with Edgar saying, The gods are just, and of our pleasant vices make instruments to plague us. The dark and vicious place where thee he got cost him his eyes. And then John reminds Mustafa that Edmund is dying when he replies, Thou hast spoken right. Tis true the wheel has come full circle. I am here. John uses this passage as a defense for the concept of a God of Providence, a God who guides the world through reward and punishment. Mustafa Mon responds that in the society of his New England, no one is at risk of harm from seeking their own pleasure. Mustafa asks, But where would Edmund be nowadays? Sitting in a pneumatic chair with his arm round a girl's waist, sucking away at his sex hormone chewing gum and looking at the feelies. The gods are just, no doubt, but their code of law is dictated in the last resort by the people who organize society. Providence takes its cue from men. Mustafa makes the point that his society is far distinct from that of Shakespeare's, or any time we ourselves can conceive of throughout history. Man now constructs his own rewards and punishments because it is man rather than nature or God that designs the human condition through the use of his technological advancement.
Hamlet. By quoting the most famous lines from Shakespeare's Hamlet, Hamlet's soliloquy atop the battlements of his castle, John emulates the pain and madness of the legendary Danish prince. The first quote, Whether tis better in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, and them, arises in Brave New World after John speaks with the controller, Mustafa Mond, about suffering he experienced back on the reservation. Unfortunately for John, he discovers that all unpleasant things were done away with for the sake of society. Therefore, there are no slings and arrows, or any opposition for that matter. And, at the slightest inconvenience, there is always so much to take one away for an impromptu mental holiday. This prospect disgusts John. He wants to feel real. Real danger, freedom, goodness, sin, unhappiness, old age, and poetry— much like Prince Hamlet yearns to truly and fully express himself to his friends, his country, and his mother. The second quote John uses from the same scene in Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1, is, To sleep, perchance to dream, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come. After digging in his little garden all day, John is weary and emotionally ill-equipped to deal with the hordes of onlookers that have come to see the savage of Surrey. Much like Hamlet, all John wants is peace in his life. Alas, both poor men do not find it, and in the end, die. We have found that Hamlet is the Shakespearean play with the most significance and connections to John and the other characters of Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Queen Gertrude, Hamlet's mother, is much akin to the character of John's own mother, Linda. After King Hamlet is murdered, Queen Gertrude marries the now King Claudius, the deceased King Hamlet's brother and murderer. Because of this dishonor to his father's memory, Prince Hamlet sees his mother and all other women as whores. Much like how John sees Lenina as an impudent strumpet because of Linda and her actions and treatment back at the reservation, Hamlet views his love, Ophelia, in the same light. This negativity ultimately ends with Ophelia drowning herself and Lenina being attacked by John. The characters of King Claudius and Pope are both seen as the men that turn their mothers into whores, and therefore must be punished. Hamlet ultimately kills King Claudius, but John only gets a few stabs into Pope. Yet, the most uncanny resemblance is between the tragic characters of Hamlet and John. Melancholic creatures at heart, they both die in the end, one by the blade of his enemy, and the other by his own hand, or rope. Tainted by the miserable worlds around them, their spirits have been crushed. All former joys and loves have been forgotten in the hopes of finding peace at the last. Alas, poor Hamlet and John, we knew them. Fellows of infinite melancholy, of most ex excellent temper, gone.